Who says financial hardships can prevent someone from chasing their dreams? Most of us dream to pursue studies to a higher level. Even better, to get a scholarship abroad. Among Indonesian actresses with surprising degrees is Maudie Ayunda, who got a scholarship for her master degree in Stanford University. Maudie is taking business administration in Stanford. Meanwhile, Jerome Paulin, an Indonesian student who is studying in Waseda University, Japan, majoring in mathematics. Having won so many math Olympics, he's attending college in a full scholarship. Jerome currently becomes one of the most popular Indonesian students who shares his activities on his YouTube channel called Nihongo Mantapu. Rogeri Deshika, often called Gary, was born into a family with less than ideal economic situation, but that didn't stop him from chasing his dream. Instead, he's currently on the way to complete his doctoral studies in the United States. Previously, he's also obtained his bachelor's and master's degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He was admitted to MIT due to his achievement of earning a gold medal at the 24th International Biology Olympiad held in Bern, Switzerland in 2013. He likes network manipulation genetics, parasitology, and immunology. Currently, he's studying for his doctoral degree at the University of California in San Francisco. It is an admirable achievement for Indonesia. Let's get to know Gary, only right here on the Sea Morning Show. All right, as you just saw, um, that was the inspirational story behind uh, Gary's journey to graduate from one of the world's top universities, MIT. And luckily for us, we are now connected with Gary himself. Good morning, Gary. Hello, Gary. Yeah, wow. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon here in San Francisco. Yes, good afternoon to you. Yeah. Good morning for us. <laughs> Gary, can you tell us of your journey to the U.S.? I mean, uh, just uh, recently, during the break, uh, I searched articles about you, and it is written that you came from Lubuk Minturun Padang, right? And how did this yeah. little boy end up in San Francisco getting his Ph.D.? Wow, I'm so inspired. Oh. I ask myself that every day, like, how did a, a little boy in Lubumintoron that likes to swim in the river, go to the sawa, munching, and everything like that, end up here in the United States, in San Francisco? And I think uh, one thing that my mom did right when I was growing up is that she always told us the importance of education. I think one, her word is that if you don't want to spend the rest of your life collecting rocks from the, from the river to sell, you should take your school seriously. And I think we grew up very poor, and I think listening to Buesti's story in the tea plantation reminded me a lot like what my mom told me back then. I think she tried really, really hard and worked really hard any type of job, yang penting halal, to ensure that we can continue our education. So I think that's the thing that stuck in my mind back then. So because we are not privileged, I cannot afford going to extra lesson, I cannot afford taking like English classes and things like that. I tried really, really hard. So I think uh, I went to the elementary school just behind my home. So it's called SDN Dua Dua Lubu Mintoron. And I remember this one time that my teacher asked me, where do you want to continue your education to where do you want to go for junior high school? Mm -hmm. And I said, SMP Satu Padang, because it's Sekolah uh, Hubung Hatta is like the founding fathers went there and it's like the oldest school in, in, in the province. And she actually laughed because she thought I was joking. And really? I think that's the moment that I thought to myself, that, yeah, like, <laughs> she was laughing because nobody went from my elementary school to that school before. And I think because nobody scored high enough to get to make the cut. And I think at the moment, I this is the moment that I always to come back whenever I feel that I'm not doing well, and I feel overwhelmed with my work. Is that in that classroom? And I told myself that if I work hard, I think I'll make it. And thankfully, I got into SMP Satu Padang that introduced me to Olympiad and things like that. And mm -hmm. they also opened a door for me to go to boarding school in Bandung, which is Priba SMA Pribadi Bilingual Boarding School in Bandung. They also gave me a full ride scholarship, and the school prepared me well to compete in. Uh, in the National Olympiad, and 
I was privileged in that as well. I learned English a lot in that school before I never take any, my English was horrible. I think something that I was insecure with. And, and yeah, I think from what you said, I think I was a part of the Indonesian team for biology Olympiad and I got silver and gold medal and that opened a way for me to apply to MIT. I think I never thought about going to the United States. Growing up, I always wanted to be a doctor like most Asian kids are, especially the one who study biology. And, but my friend reached out to me and she was like also an alum from the uh, International Biology Olympiad team for Indonesia. And she said, you should look into MIT. And I read more about it and I fell in love because it's a school full of nerds, someone like me. <laughs> I feel that growing, <laughs> growing up, I couldn't relate to a lot of people. And I just, I just the, the idea of like a paradise of people, of nerds, like doing the thing they're passionate about. And especially also they provide like financial aid, which is they are separate from your application. So you are need based. If you deserve to be at MIT, they'll ensure you get the financial coverage. So, so and yeah, yeah, I think I only applied to the one. Yeah, you, you shared about your background from elementary school, middle school, and high school in Indonesia. Tell us about, you know, how did it feel to be accepted when you got the acceptance notification from MIT? And then maybe share about your experience at MIT. What did you enjoy most during your time studying at MIT? Sure, yeah. And it was like winning a lottery. I think I told my mom that I want to go to the United States. I want to go to MIT, this number one school in the world. And she was like, I mean, obviously, like a mother said, like, ah, it's really far. How are you going to get there? How are you going to pray? What are you going to eat as a Muslim there? And I was worried. And I told her that I'm just going to apply. I mean, there's no chance that like, there's very little chance that I'm going to get in. So I have very low expectation. And yeah, and I think I uh, applied and I got in. I think I was the only one from Indonesia that got in that year. And I was really, really happy for like uh, five seconds, maybe. I think I called my mom. It was early in the morning. Like I was straight praying for Subu, and I think I called her. And I checked my admission website, and I called her, and like and she was really happy for me. But always, 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 every time we move to educational stages, for me and my sibling is how are we going to afford that? And I think it's really expensive going to the U.S. And I told her like. Don't worry about it. I'm going to find a scholarship. There's financial aid that will let me know how much I will get. I can get scholarship from the Indonesian government as well. Yes, and, and here you are right now. I think. In San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I we've talked about your thankfully, achievement. Thankfully, at, uh, yeah, I would like at, to know. I, was I would like to fun. know more about your struggles. I mean, uh, to get to this point, it's not easy, right? You faced some struggles. It's not, I think. And yeah. can you share it? With us, so uh, many, the struggle actually. and how you overcome it. I I was very so because I've been away from home since I was I don't know like fifteen years old I think mm -hmm. and and I left home I left West Sumatra when I in in twenty ten almost a decade ago so it's hard to be far away from your family at the same time like. I'm also the breadwinner of the family. I send money home since I was in high school, and that's a really high burden, like really heavy burden for a young kid, especially still pursuing his education, yes. to do so. And I like to call my mom on the weekend. I think we, we used to do this like every time I compete a competition, I would call her, and I said like, "Can you pray for me because I'm doing this competition?" And and every time I win something, I would call her as well. And I think. There is one word that she said that like I, I could I couldn't give you anything, except my prayer. So I always ask her for my, for her prayers. But yeah, it's been really hard. I think one of my hardest moment was when I was in middle school. I think I graduated top of the island. I get the highest national exam score, and I have like several achievements from like a bronze medal in National Science Olympiad and other competition that I did. But I found myself not sure that if I can continue to high school because I tried to save money back then, but we end up use that money and I just, yeah, and I just didn't know what to do. And I think, thankfully things work out and I get scholarship to go to Bandung. But at the time, I didn't even have money to buy a, the plane ticket. So we had to ask the, the mayor of the city because the mayor of the city was like a family friend and like my aunt just told her like, Gary is like getting scholarship, can, and he got the highest national exam score and he needs like money to buy the plane ticket to go to West Java 
to Bandung. And and yeah, I think I remember like writing a letter to to the to the mayor and sending them and yeah and finance that. So when I get into MIT as well, I think it's the same thing. No money, and I think I was thankfully like my aunt asked me like Gary, I saw that you get into MIT. What do you need? And like and asked her like I need some money in my bank account to apply for a visa. And she's like, I'll send you right now. Come to my place. Get your passport, get your visa, and and she gave me a huge luggage filled of like all the goodies from Indonesia. So wow. I'm very thankful for everyone in my life, especially my mom and my aunt. And yeah, I think I'm here because I felt we're really lucky in a sense. Like things just work out, and I think it's because my mom's prayers. So Gary, again, uh, that's a very great story about you overcoming trials and and uh, overcoming you know struggles. But now, currently, again, you, you're happy in your life. You're working and studying in San Francisco, getting your PhD, right? Can you tell us very briefly about what are you doing with your research? Uh, and maybe uh, for people who at home maybe don't understand about biotechnology in, in simple terms. Yeah, so you probably, I work in a, a very uh, drug discovery lab. So we are looking for new drugs to treat cancer, with new drugs to treat COVID. In fact, we have a lot of like, uh, tools and treatment that we develop and also assay we develop during this pandemic to treat COVID and to detect COVID. So it's an antibody engineering lab and I think you've heard a lot about antibody. So antibody is what your body produces to protect yourself against diseases and especially virus and cancer. So for me, I work on pancreatic cancer. So it's one of the most deadliest cancer. If you get diagnosed, it's within a couple months. And I'm looking for a new target to kill this cancer cell and also trying to understand why this cancer cell is very aggressive. And because this cancer is very unique somehow, they grow in very extreme condition and that makes them very resilient. So something that I like to remind myself, if you're, if you're going in a lot of hardship and really extreme condition, you become more resilient. So in a way, we share a similarities between me and my subject. but. When I came to MIT, the only reason that I came is simply because I was really interested in research. That's something that we don't get here in Indonesia. So I immersed myself, joined a lab, and I spent most of my undergrad working in the lab of Harvey Lodish and Hido Plu, which is an amazing cell biologist. And I remember like meeting Harvey for the first time, and I told him, I read your textbooks when I was in high school, and he was super impressed. Like, you were in, where did you go in high school? And I said, oh, I went to Indonesia, like, how do you even read my, my textbook when you were in high school? And I said, oh, I did a, like, a bio Olympian. And I think that sold it for me. Like, he, he really likes me. He's still my biggest supporter and mentor. And I think during at MIT, I worked under an amazing Indonesian scientist who is now an Afro Junior Fellow, Novali Pisesha. And she was a great mentor for me and also motivated me to pursue a PhD. Nice. Gary, um, what do you think when people say you're their inspiration? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they've met me before, but maybe, yeah, I feel weird about it. I think I, or maybe what advice do yeah, you have for kids Gary, who look up to you and <laughs> see you as an example? What advice do you have for those watching at home in Indonesia that want to be like you? I think, I think the most important thing is that I think your passion has to come from within. And I think one thing that you need to, when you are like in middle school or like high school, it's a good opportunity to, to find something that you enjoy. It's something that you want to immerse your time with. And once you recognize that, and you need to nurture that. And I think that's the most important thing. You nurture it and you put the time and put the hard work. And it's, yeah, I think for me it was, I really interested in biology. For me, it makes me religious. It makes me understand how life is. And at the same time, like, I found it fun to do a lot of competition. I met like Indonesian students from all over the, the country. And I met, now have, I have also have friends from all over the world and it opened a lot of opportunities. So find something that you really enjoy to do and put a lot of time and work into it. I think that's my advice. It's some good advice. So find something that they're passionate about and put a lot of time to it. Right. So I'm curious, you know, what are your plans after the PhD? Do you plan on staying in the United States or do you plan on coming back to Indonesia? Or share with us, what, what does the future uh, hold for you? Yeah, this is the question that everyone asks and everyone assumes that most likely you're gonna stay in the United States. And it's actually the opposite. The, the only reason that I, I pursue a PhD is because I wanna go home. And I think I'm very lucky for where I am right now. I think my parents paid nothing for my education. And I think 
I'm also the privileged situation that I get a lot of opportunities. I can apply to a lot of school. I get accepted to a lot of school. And this is like top university, top research university. Not that many people have that privilege. So I feel that I think it's my responsibility. I think we don't have enough PhDs, especially in biology, in biotechnology. And I really want to be the bridge that bring this biotechnology home to Indonesia. So yeah, I really want to go home. I think help to establish the biotechnology. And recently, actually, I've been engaged with uh, Biopharma, trying to give them advice how to establish antibody platform and antibody drug conjugate platform in Indonesia because we don't have that right now. And I think I was talking with some of the directors of this uh, Indonesian biotech companies, Indonesian government-owned biotech companies as well. And oh, the state of them is very depressing. And I think we really need to catch up to the state of art, what is the biotechnology here in the United States. Hence, we need to make our own vaccine, for example, during this pandemic. We need to, try, we need to make treatment for this pandemic. We need to find, make our own assay so we don't have to rely on Chinese or other countries to give us uh, all these tools and also treatment and drugs. So, yeah. Wow, very inspirational. Wants to come back to serve the country so that the country can yes. be self-reliant. Now, you know, I, I also went to school in Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, and I'm curious, Share with us, Gary, kind of what are some things that you love to do currently in the United States, whether it was like in Massachusetts or in California, that maybe you couldn't do in Indonesia? Oh, I think the U.S. Is, has such an amazing and diverse landscape, and they have a really, really good national park system. So I spend most of my time going hiking and backpacking and camping ah. in here. I think when I've so when I was in Massachusetts, we would go to New Hampshire and we'd go during the fall when the foliage is beautiful, all these colorful leaves. And I would go skiing as well. So I get nice. I picked up skiing you know, like in here in the United States too. And when I moved to California, the only reason that I applied to school in California is because it's so beautiful, I think. The weather is great, no more winter, and you experience how harsh it is the winter in Wisconsin, similar <laughs> like in Boston. Yeah, and very cold. You mentioned uh, your hobby is diving, right, Gary? Do you get to dive yeah. there in America, or you wait until you get back to Indonesia? Uh, <laughs> I feel that I feel that like Indonesia has the best diving destination in the world. No question asked for that. And I think we have the richest coral reefs. We are called the Coral Triangle. And Raja Ampat is simply, it is true, it's the last paradise. And I feel that I went, I went, I went diving in Hawaii, I went diving in Baja California, and I was like, what is this? Like, this is just rocks. There's nothing here. <laughs> So, and here is also it's really cold, and I'm like, no, I think I'd rather, I'd rather like be in Indonesia and like support the tourism there too. And also ask my friends to come to visit Indonesia. I think I met four divers like that I bring to Indonesia and yeah. make them get a training in, in Bali and brought them to Rajab, but yeah. Wow, All right, so Gary. Gary, thank you so much. A lot of information. It's great to hear about his story that he was, since he was young, 15 years old, independent. Yes currently doing a PhD helping pancreatic research and then again hopefully like I said when you finish up in a few years you come back to Indonesia and help uh, everyone so that we can learn from you. Such an inspiration for, for all of us so thank you for being with us here. Thank you. Can't wait to welcome you home Gary. Thank you, thank you for being with us today virtually. Yes. All the best. Yes. Stay safe out there. <laughs> thank you.